podcast friends i am back again with yet another video this time we are going to have a look at game between serge labedev famous russian master and count leo tolstoy so i found this game in my database and there are many other games listed Uh, on internet on chessgames.com there are five games i have included those games um, in a link below this video so you can check them out but this game is really interesting as this game was played in year 1900 and this was a correspondence game so sir chelebede was a fairly strong master Com- like he was contemporary of chigarin and this game was fairly strong and count tosto used to play chess a bit uh, his uh, biographer an englishman noted that he used to play chess with him and with uh, his family members and friends etc so leo was not a very kind of professional or bookish chess player but he was fairly good at chess so let's have a look at this game Labede began with move d4, close opening, then d5, c4, d takes c4, queen's gambit accepted by Leo, and this move bishop g4 is a very famous line by Bent Larsen. I, it was very popular. but like in 1970s and after it this line is not played there often maybe because there are some weaknesses but let's uh, look at the game queen b3 so here threat is queen is going to take pawn on b7 so maybe there are possible moves to defend this pawn either queen to c8 or moving the pawn but both are not that good positionally so let's have a look at this game first g takes f3 and b6 now here Move suggested by stock face is knight b to d7. Let's have a look at this line. Rather than defending b pawn very passively, this is kind of active defense. So here a line goes like this. And white is probably okay in this line. even with broken castle so now let's go back and have a look at the <laughs> main move that was played during the game that was rook g1 so after rook g1 c6 was played by count here another possibility is a6 maybe but c6 was played during the game then knight c3 b5 giving the bishop back so the game continued like this and here after a3 like black is still equalizes before this leo is a pawn down in the analysis but bishop e2 was not that strong so after a3 maybe there are chances for him to equalize so let's have a look at this game a3 first in this line after castle it seems maybe that black king is in some kind of danger but actually it survives because position of white king is also not very good so here is almost equal but 
what was played in the game was much more interesting let's have a look at that my text d5 5 and Leo castles so here rook g4 was considered one of the main lines by chess engine and even f4 but what was played during the game was bishop d3 so let's have a look at f4 first this is far stronger move And here in this line, I think black is not better, but the position is kind of equal. So let's go back a few moves. Here, what was played in the game was bishop d3. So after bishop d3, here count as real chance of equalizing the game with the move a3 again but what and even queen to h4 is really good actually it was not suggested by stockfish but when i analyzed uh, in putting move queen to d4 into chess engine i found that it is really actually playable and it is you can say equivalent to a3 move so that black can equalize so let's have a look at the a3 here again after a3 and queen h4 it seems that black queen may get trapped but it is not so so here maybe a repetition is also possible so to avoid all these things actually queen e4 was queen e7 was played during the game uh, very defensive move and reply by labede was also re also very defensive like after realizing that e3 can be equalizing for black what labede play in this position was a3 that is not a good move the best move suggested by stockfish was rook to g4 so trying to pile both rooks on g5 this line suggested by stockfish is really good for white but actually what was played in the game was move a3 after a3 a3 black has two responses like queen h4 here is really good because white is ignoring his possible attacks on king's side so it is really possible to move queen to h4 and launch an attack on white king but what count played was a very intuitive sacrifice so let's have a look at this move queen h4 first here after queen h4 rook g4 queen h3 rook g3 queen h4 rook g4 this may be equal in no way black is worse here but what count played was really very aggressive let's have a look at that sacrifice this step takes e5 so here a piece sacrificed by Leo Tosa was not very uh, was not liked by chess engine very much stock is that this position is not really very good for black and with proper defense even though white king is in the center white can survive and eventually win the game so here basically white as a bishop pair against blacks very passive inactive knight on b8 and rooks also are not connected so black's position is not really very hot here so after queen takes h2 it was 
really here what count missed was a counter sacrifice so all these moves are played are really very good and very optimal after king e2 check counter check and here actually lebeda is the very lebeda missed a very good opportunity to win the game here bishop f6 is almost winning because here there is a very forcing line suggested by stock piece instead of giving this check uh, by queen on c3 let's have a look at this bishop f6 line so here it is actually forced because after the check by queen on c3 there is no proper defense so this queen takes s is forced move now this is also forced move queen takes c1 because if queen moves out of the g file then queen check is lethal so it takes c1 and in this line we can see that now it is really a place for black um, there are no chances of survival so queen for rook and here mate cannot be avoided so it was really hopeless but what was played in the game was queen jack on c3 instead of bishop f6 so here now black has a real chance to survive so after f6 because now when this up goes to f6 rook goes to f7 now this square was not empty for the rook one move before so now rook can laterally defend g7 square and even though white can pile rooks on g5 attack is not that strong after rook to f7 position is not as strong as before still white is slightly plus but position is not as strong as it was before so now here uh, what stock we suggested was real good move actually all human players would rather play rook to g4 or g3 or trying to pile on the g5 for the attack but here there is a very good move rook g to d1 and now this is actually indirectly defending pawn takes bishop because if d pawn takes bishop then rook delivers check on d8 and there is no way to survive because of the back rank weakness knight is still on his home square so rooks are not connected very well and black's back rank is real weak so let's have a look at this line we nice to go back sub retreats capture and here after all these exchanges white is clearly better this is really very forcing line so not much to calculate actually this was this is actually not really easy to find so let's go back rook g4 move that was played during the game knight d7 and here there are queen takes c6 and rook c to g1 two moves so in the game rook c to g1 was played but let's have a look at queen a5 queen queen takes c6 so if queen takes c6 queen takes exchange in this line probably it is equal but what was played in the game was rook c to g1 and now back rank is not that weak so after knight e5 what was played here was queen a5 but that is not <laughs> again a very good move it is very superficial here if queen goes to a5 rook cannot capture the queen and it is queen is actually threatening to cap to capture rook on 
a but rook easily can move or other rook can defend so what was the better move here was rook g7 so one main line goes like this and here oh fine is still slightly better but what was played in the game was queen a5 so here threat is queen takes a and rook cannot capture queen because of the back rank weakness so rook f to a7 probably the only move and here again a very bad move by labadev he moved his rook to again he moved his rook to g8 to deliver check now rook takes rook is really forced but here better move is rook to g7 again so here an opportunity was missed and after this exchange is here queen h3 was slightly better in view of this line but what was played during the game and here actually it is very drawish position now because the black has an extra pawn there is no way to convert this advantage to a win and here actually lebede make a very big mistake by moving his king to c3 because after that it is really hopeless uh, leading to a probably a force mate or a losing lot of material so let's have a look at the king even move first actually this was the move suggested by chess engines stop this so after this sequence of moves these are not all force moves but basically what happens is that black uh, have no way to keep that extra h pawn or to convert this slight advantage to a win and this was line suggested by stockfish but what was played during the game was king c3 and that is really a losing move after queen c1 check there are two possible moves if king goes to b4 that leads to a very funny situation let's have a check it here c5 check and after this forcing moves now eventually black king will get out of checks or even can uh, counter check with his queen and there is no way to stop the e pawn so this is really losing we should not consider this uh, line at all so here what happens is that king goes to d1 so after this last move queen to a1 labedo resign in view of this uh, very forcing moves a uh, long sequence of forcing moves and th this was really anti climax as, as once white was winning and then black was winning and then it was almost a draw and then again white lost because of one bad king move so let's have a look at the last line and this is really hopeless there is no need to go any further to check this variation so it is almost winning for count after that little mistake by labadev so that's all for today please leave your comments 
एंड फीडबैक थैंक्स